American artist Edward Hopper is best known for his landscapes and cityscapes that served as backdrops for the inhabitants that he placed within them. Most of his subjects portrayed a visual storyline. A woman waiting in a theater for a movie to begin, a man closing up a gas station, office workers and restaurant patrons all going quietly about their everyday lives. A reoccurring theme in Hopper's art is windows. Sometimes he placed the viewer inside, sometimes on the outside looking in. The windows created a frame that offered the viewer a glimpse into the storyline. Today I'm going to demonstrate a Hopper-inspired self-portrait that is revealed through a window. It's three-dimensional and stage-like with just enough depth and seclusion to distance the viewer from the scene and place them on the outside looking in. We'll begin by drawing a self-portrait on a piece of Bristol board. This isn't a head and shoulders portrait. This is placing yourself into a scene that captures an everyday moment of your life. If we think about the scenes that Edward Hopper would have been inspired by, the environment might be a classroom, a car, a room in a house, at a shop, or a restaurant. Now, my portrait is a very intimate look at me on any given morning drinking coffee at my kitchen table. Any drawing media could be used, pencils, markers, pens. Now I used a water-soluble graphite in a pencil form and in a cake form as well. Graphite, as we know, is simply a pencil, right? But most graphite and most pencils is just that. When you draw with it, you're placing graphite down onto the paper. With water-soluble graphite, however, if we were to add water to this, the particles of graphite all flow together, creating a paint. We can also wet the paper first, and then take the water-soluble graphite pencil right in to the water, and you can see that we get a much different line than what we would have just on the paper. Art graph has water-soluble graphite in a cake form. This is just like having a little cake of watercolor. So with a brush, you can paint with it on paper, on canvas, on many different surfaces. It's great for mixed media work as well. So that's my preferred medium, and that's what I've used in the self-portrait. The width of the drawing doesn't really matter, but the height should be the same as the window. Now this is an inexpensive pre-cut mat, part of a value pack of 50. The nice thing about it is that it has scored lines that can be bent inward like this to form a sill in the window and give it a little bit of dimension. You'll notice that I've drawn directly on the mat with my water-soluble graphic to make it look like it's the outside of my house. Now to create the glass within it, I'm going to use a piece of clear film. I have some that's been cut just slightly larger than the window itself. And if I place the mat over the clear film like this, and then use a ballpoint pen to trace the opening, just etching a line into the film like that. All right, then I have the same size as the window opening. And following the ballpoint pen line, just fold it up and inward like this. Use your fingers to push it down you've got a good hard crease there. Okay, this is forming a little box, but we have trouble on the ends there, so we need to get the ends to overlap. Now you can achieve this by cutting from the outside corner of the film to the corner of the ballpoint lines. All right, now we have a nice little box that's going to fit right inside of our window here. Let's glue it in, just a bit of glue, on all four sides. 
and then take your finger, kind of smooth it out like this. Now we'll place that box inside the window and with your fingers just kind of press it against the sill. Here where I've placed curtains so that they can be viewed as if they're inside the house. These are just made with tissue paper. You can make them with some scrap fabric or uh, some decorative paper if you'd like. Now let's take my drawing and you want to attach the window to the drawing but the window needs to face outward so it's actually backwards against the drawing like this. I have some book tape here. This is a good strong wide tape that should hold it together and carefully you're going to align the window with the background and place the tape, trying not to have any gaps in between. And then trim off any excess you have at the end. Now curve the other side of the Bristol board to meet the window this way. Now it's a little tricky to hold this bow and if you bend too far it might actually crack. So if you can get another person to hold it while you attach it, it's a little easier. You can use the tape again and get down in the middle here to tape the bottom and tape it closed. But what I like to do is to take a little piece of hook and loop tape. I've put the hook already on this side and I'm going to cut small strips of it because you don't need much and attach it over here on the right side on the very edge like this, all the way down on the right edge, then curve it to meet the hook tape. I like to do this, first of all, it's a little easier than trying to get the tape on there, but secondly, because if I want to open this up again, it's easy to open it so that I can lay it flat and look at my drawing. Now, I would suggest writing a piece of poetry or a description of the scene and either glue it or tape it to the back side so that the words can say what the visual image can't, just like on this piece here. So to view this lesson plan as a PDF and to see many more like it, please visit dickblick.com.